folks, and welcome to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I am your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. You know, just as always, we always say we love hearing from each and every one of you. Comment, text, you can even from email. From each and every one of them? That's thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands. But that I would be fun if we could hear from everyone. our people. I love our people. So there you have it. Call or text anytime. 305-900-2363. Again, that's 305-900-2363. Or you can always send us an email via bendradioshow at gmail.com. And you heard him in the background. Yes, the one and only Jeff Tigger Earhart is back with us again the show. I'm kind of in one of the moods. Kind You're of ornery. ornery. Kind of ornery going into the Easter weekend. You are. You have like this evil twinkle in your eye. It's kind of ornery. And I don't know why. Because April Fool's is coming up on Monday. That is true. And okay, you got to share with some folks. You are an instigator. You are somebody that will go the extra mile. I will go in debt. To absolutely pull off a practical joke. Pull off a practical joke. Yep. Tell these guys one of your most recent ones. Uh, This isn't one of the most recent ones, but picture of yourself in my brother's barn that gave him a heart oh, attack. Oh, that's what you're talking about. Oh, oh, okay. So we had to do, uh, I was at the National Finals Rodeo, right? And we were there for the convention for all of the announcers and bullfighters and all of that kind of stuff. And I had this great big, what was it, about seven foot tall poster of me? Life Something like that? Size, like seven, if, eight. I, actually, I think he was a tick taller in the poster than Yeah, it was life. like seven, eight, <laughs> seven, eight feet. And it's it's really cool. I mean, it's it's this really cool image. Uh, you got to actually put it on Facebook. It's cool. He looked dark, it, sinister. No, it's, a, it's a dark image. It's really cool, but but it's kind of this dark image. And, With his cowboy hat pulled down I mean, low. It's, it's really cool. It's a really cool image, right? because all of us announcers are trying to outdo one another. And uh, we thought it'd be a cool idea, so we went out to your brother's place and we put it inside of the barn right when you open up the door. The calving barn. And there was a monster poster of me. Uh, suffice it to say, he was not impressed with not that whatsoever. whatsoever. He actually was downright mad because it scared the bejesus out of him. Right. And we had let his wife know this was happening. And so she happened to be videoing from afar. And yes, he not just stumbled backwards trying to get out of the he barn. Came as running fast. Out of the he barn. fell on his butt, like laid him out on the ground. I he was, was like, I what was the funny. heck is this? I thought it was funny. <laughs> I will go to epic proportions for a joke. But you do know that how my family rolls, something will eventually come back on you. You on can't one up me. <laughs> You've been trying and you cannot one up me. All right. Well, regardless if it's April Fools or you hear this later on into the month or whenever you listen, there is something about keeping the laughter, finding ways, I think, to keep life interesting, keep people on their toes. And if you can't laugh, why And it live? doesn't matter if you hurt their feelings as long as it's funny. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that. All right, first off with the show, we are going to talk about something that is nostalgic in some ways that is crazy, and I think some of you may have never realized they would become nostalgic, and that is the good old-fashioned road map. Yes, those maps, those atlases, you know, we used to live by them before technology took over, the TomToms came about, having a what do you call it in your vehicle? Now you have you have the maps the right GPS, there. The GPS is that what you're talking the about? The GPS is right there. Now, what reason why why I guess I should say are we bringing this up? Because it's become a lost art to be able to read these road maps. Did you know that Rand McNally has been around since 1873? By the way, I did. I was going to actually bring it up. This year's is the 100th anniversary of putting out the Road Atlas. And if you don't own one anymore or you haven't bought one in a long time, it's only $20, $25. I recommend still buying one and keeping it in your vehicle because Tigger and I, whether we're on the road for public speaking, uh, maybe ranch work, might be following or chasing after the next rodeo that we're working we have found ourselves more times than not in areas of the United States that there is no cell service. Yep. Sorry, satellite, it doesn't always work. There are going to be failures. 
And thankfully, both of us do still understand how to read that good old road atlas. And it almost becomes kind of a fun trick, a game between Tigger and I, making sure we're checking each other's skills. And I'll have Tigger going down a road he's never, ever heard of trying to find some way into Nebraska. And he's been there a million times. And I'm going, let's take this one. He'll be like, why are you going down this one? I'm like, because I see this tiny little road. I can tell it's probably not paved. I still use a let's Atlas give it a, try. a lot. You do, actually. When we're planning ahead to find out where the next fuel stop is or something like that, or if there may be a hotel in the next town. Now, I know we can do that with our apps and we can do that, but there is something nostalgic and I think just kind of fun about looking at the roadmap. Well, I thought this was interesting. I kind of started reading into it about, you know, are our students in school still learning how to use an actual roadmap? And I'm not saying that all teachers are not still teaching them. Yes, they are somewhat being taught how to use them, but there are some areas that don't do that anymore because they just rely, like you said, on our electronics. You got it. And why they are now suggesting in some of the studies is to bring the good old roadmap excuse me, the good old roadmap back is because it actually helps improve your cognitive skills. It's a whole nother set of skills where now it's problem solving. It's becoming that putting one and two together and finding out where you're going to be. There's a little more thought to it down to even math skills, everything. When I was a wee one, I remember in grade school that We did that a lot. If it'd be like, I'm assuming like a geography class, we did a lot with maps and reading and be able to give directions. And I've noticed that with a lot of our young people, they go outside and are not sure, like if they're in an unfamiliar city, which way is north. Oh, I find that all the time. They don't know their directions. And then when you ask directions of how to get a certain place, they don't know how to do it. Well, put the address into your Google Maps. Yes. Okay, there's still a lot of people out there that don't use Google Maps. Like, like our parents don't. They Correct. don't want to use Google Maps. I don't blame them in a way. And on top of that, we have found that electronics fail. I and mean- interestingly enough, sorry, I'm cutting you off on this, because we have found on some locations where uh, what you put into Google Maps, it does not take you to that destination. It will be literally, it's in the middle of a pasture. Okay, that just recently happened when we were attending a bull sale and they had the maps, they had it everything mapped out. You're supposed to click the icon, take you right there. You know where it took us? He's not kidding. He took It took us to a mile south of the individual who was having the bull sale and we would have been in the middle of no, their it was, pasture. It was further than that. It was further than that away. It was more than just a mile. I mean, we would have kind of been close, but we would have been, uh, okay, now where do we go? Well, here's the other discrepancy that Tigger and I both have found is that we have it happen more times than not, depending on some if someone is using an Apple device versus an Android device. If they are using an Apple device, they more than likely will not find where we live. Why That's is crazy. That? Why is I don't that? understand it. But if you use a Android device, they always end up here at the cab and they find us no problem. Now, some of it I think has to deal with, and this also dev- dives into another area you may not be aware of that Google Maps, for example, you should look up your own home address and everybody should do this and make sure that the pin that they have marked as your address is actually your location because I've had to go in that in there and physically fix that for our own place, for the the my parents' place, for my brother's places, because Google doesn't know exactly where those mailboxes are, those entry gates are into your operation. They're just guessing. And you have to actually file a form with Google stating why they are incorrect and prove to them that this is now the new location in order to get them to move that little target so that people can find you. Technology has changed the way so much that we're doing things, but take the kids and have some fun with a map. That way they will understand their state a little bit more, where towns are at, where highways are at. And if you're like me, you learn a lot better when you can kind of see something and visualize. You know what? It is a great activity to do even on a weekend. You're looking at something to do outdoors. Maybe the weather's kind of not the nicest, but you could at least go for a drive. There you go. Grab yourself a map, like Tigger said, Check out what we always call your own backyard within your state. And your kids might be 
possibly surprised. They might name off towns that you've never even heard of, and now you might find yourself on a road you've never been before. All right, we're wrapping that part up. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a short break. We come back. We're talking with a fishing pro. You're going to want to hear what he has got to say. The Ben Show will be back right after this. This is Beck. First, I appreciate all of you for listening and making The Bend part of your week. Many of you have asked, how do I catch past episodes? The answer is super easy. Head to thebendshow.com and click on the shows tab. There you can listen to every episode all the way back to episode one. Podcasters, head to your favorite podcasting app and search The Bend. You'll find us. Be sure to follow and subscribe and never miss another episode again. Get ready for the Western experience of a lifetime. The world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale is back and better than ever. Join us May 16th through the 19th in Mile City, Montana. From the finest bucking stock to electrifying horse racing, this event has it all. Don't miss out on the kickoff concert featuring Josh Turner and special guest Chancey Williams. Mark your calendars and saddle up for the world-famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale where the spirit of the West comes alive. Get your tickets at BuckingHorseSale.com. Hi, this is Kim with Medora Boot and Western Wear, and I just wanted to update you guys. We are having a 50% off sale through the month of March on all Wrangler and Cinch outerwear. It's only what's in stock and what we have in the store. Cinch Wrangler outerwear for youth, women, and men. For more information, head to MedoraBoot.com. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. And riding along shotgun, as always, is my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. Now, recently, we were able to sit down and visit with professional angler Johnny Candle. He's also a public speaker. If you ever get a chance to catch one of his seminars, definitely do so. Well, Johnny is, has just made his way, excuse me, back from guiding down in Florida like he does every winter. And now he's back in Devil's Lake, North Dakota, getting ready to chase after the walleyes up in that area. And Johnny, we want wanted to find out from you what are some of your most favorite fish to go after. Now one thing that's impressed me Johnny is that you are somebody that actually has fished a lot of different types of waters. You say you grew up on the Great Lakes, Lake Erie, Ohio area, came west, found yourself in the Dakotas, walleye country. Some of the same species are similar to what's in the Great Lakes, but yet it's still a whole different ball game. But then now you're heading down to the south and you're taking on redfish. And that's kind of become a bigger deal. But yet folks in the upper northern part of the country don't know much about it. And I was wondering if you could just kind of cue us in as to why we would want to, you know, we think of Florida, immediately think of the Keys. We're thinking Mahi Mahi. We're thinking, you know, these exotics. But then there's this thrill about the redfish that I feel myself gets kind of not talked about enough. And I was wondering if you could kind of share with why this has kind of caught your eye. Yeah, they're, they're a fascinating fish. When you look at one or a picture of one, if you're from the upper Midwest, the first thing you think is carp. Oh, I couldn't agree more. Absolutely. That's the first thing I thought they were. I had to double check with friends. Yeah, so we're looking at this fish that has a beauty of its own, but it's kind of got to be appreciated, right? Because they're not a sexy fish. They don't change colors, like you said, like a mahi-mahi. They're not a marlin with a big, long bill and a fancy dorsal fin. They are they look like a carp. Or they're a drum. They're a sheep's head from the saltwater market, right? And they even have almost, I call it a dimple. It's not a dimple, but it's like a, a, a birthmark on their cheek or on the on tail. The tail yeah. On the tail. Sorry, excuse me. On the tail. Yep. They have a spot on their tail and uh, the spot is kind of a cool thing. We'll get to that in a second. But when you get down there and you hook a redfish, uh, the first one I ever caught was in Louisiana. It was only about a 24 inch long fish and it took me 10 minutes to land it. And I'm an upper Midwest guy, right? A 24-inch walleye is about seven cranks on the reel and net it and throw it, throw it on the floor. It takes 17 seconds, right? And I'm going, how on earth can this fish be this strong? Then you catch a big one. 
a 30 incher, 35, 40 incher, right upwards, 30, 35 pounds. And you're literally fishing with the same rod and reel that you would throw a quarter ounce jig for a walleye or a smallmouth bass. And you're doing battle for an hour, right? With these giant fish that are, they're just, they turn into these majestic creatures, almost like unicorns, right? They've got these t- spots on their tail that are like a fingerprint. There's no two redfish that look exactly the same. Every spot is different. And then you start getting more concerned about the spot than the size of the fish. I caught one last year with 13 spots on one side, which is absolutely incredible. Uh, You throw all that in, in a pile and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then you get to catch them in January in shorts and flip-flops. I don't know. uh, Walleye tastes good. So do redfish. But to catch a walleye in January takes 14 layers of clothes and a propane heater. Uh, It's not too hard to figure out why I've fallen in love with redfish. They're phenomenal. Over the years, you've caught a lot of different species of fish. And another one that's caught my eye is there is a trout species also that's down in the Florida region, the Panhandle, that uh, southeast part of the the Gulf. There, what what's the difference between those kinds of trout and what we maybe the rest of the world think of when it think about trout? Trout in the ocean are downright mean. That's the difference, right? Uh, I look at a trout, and, and no offense to all those uh, fly slinging trout anglers from I hear the. Ya. I hear ya. <laughs> no offense to you folks, because uh, I've had a lot of fun catching rainbows and brookies and palominos, and I, I've I've done a lot of trout fishing. Uh, even the Great Lakes tributaries with brown trout and lake trout and steelhead, they're a lot of fun, uh, but they're not. Uh, a speckled sea trout or a, a white trout from the ocean that have fangs that look like a vampire. Look them up online. Look at some pictures. Uh, they're aggressive. They're mean. They fight 10 times harder than a freshwater fish. Uh, they'll eat just about anything. I don't have to open my fly box and go, oh, I need a number 13 speckled olive midge with black wings today or I'm not going to get a bite. I can put a white grub on a jig head and throw it out there and catch one after the other. So they're a little easier to catch. They fight a lot harder. Uh, table fare, they're right up there with any other fish I've ever eaten in my life. Uh, and, and again, ease. Uh, they're right there. They're any rock jetty, any boat dock, any sand flat in the Gulf of Mexico, you can find a, a speckled sea trout. So they're, they're just a great, fun fish to catch. You know, if I'm not mistaken, I think if you had to ask Johnny which he likes better, uh, fishing on those likes, the devil's like, or down in Florida after some of the saltwater fish, I'm going to say he likes the saltwater fish. All I know for a fact is that one of these years we are going to make a point to hook up with Johnny when he's down in Florida just to get a handle on what he is bringing in, those tight lines, what's he reeling I, in? I've never been saltwater fishing before, ever. Now, we've been fishing with him at Devil's Lake, yes. and we had a great time going after the walleye, but uh, never been down to that part of the country for fishing ever. I I agree. We've never done it, and so it's being added to the continuous bucket list that never ends, but it will happen. And for those of you that are looking for an angler that has been there, done that, and is just a really fun guy to hang out with no matter what, you really got to check out Johnny Candle. If you want to be going after walleyes, he's up there in Devil's Lake, North Dakota. But then as soon as it gets cold and the water starts icing over in the north, he's heading down to Florida. And like Tigger said, he's heading after the saltwater fish. Now, I have told him that I would love to take him fly fishing because I'm nuts about fly fishing, which he has done before. But he does like you know, being out on the big water. He likes going after the walleyes, of course. He likes going after those sporting fish. But... He is very quick to say that when he is fishing, he doesn't go out, yeah, it's just a relaxing time, you know, that he's like, no, nobody does that. You go fishing to catch fish. It's like game on. It's game on with Johnny, but he is a wonderful guy to be around, and he explains things very, very, very well when it comes to why you are using the type of bait or the tackle that you're using, and it's a way for a lot of people that are not maybe experienced anglers to understand. I would agree. I would agree. And he's excellent at explaining maybe why some of the practices we did years and years ago, they may have changed a tick 
in a different way. And he's very good at explaining what he's using, why he's using it to bring in the biggins. And if you want to follow Johnny along, you can go on Facebook, give him a like and a follow at Johnny Candle, professional angler. And you can always check out his website, johnnycandle.com. And be sure to know that on the benshow.com website, we will have all of Johnny's contact information as well. Wonderful. All right. We're going to take a short break here, but when we come back, don't worry. We have got more to share. We never like, we never leave you hanging. Let's put it that way. The Ben Show will be back right after this. The 2024 world famous Mile City Bucking Horse Sale starts with horse racing. <laughs> Six days with Paramutual Wagering, May 4th and 5th on Derby Days, coinciding with the Kentucky Derby that'll be shown live in Miles City, Montana. Mother's Day is extra special, with moms free to the races and more races added May 17th through the 19th. The world-famous Miles City Bucking Horse Sale, where the spirit of the West comes alive. For a full schedule and tickets, head online at BuckingHorseSale.com. Hey guys and gals, this is John Arman with Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV travels the back roads to the backwaters in pursuit of the ultimate adventure in hunting and fishing. Join Team UOA every week for exciting action in the crosshairs of the outdoors. Catch Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV on YouTube, Amazon Prime, and make sure to follow Team UOA on Facebook and Instagram to share in the ultimate outdoor adventure. You've waited, dreamt of a hunting adventure, and now have harvested that trophy of a lifetime. Keep the memory alive with a custom-designed mount preserved as a work of art. Check out our approved taxidermist. Depending on your location, the award-winning Schneider Taxidermy is located in Helena, Montana. When hunting the Dakotas, JB's Wildlife Designs in Mandan, North Dakota, then Shadron Creek Taxidermy in Nebraska, and for the Central USA, Little Rack Taxidermy in Macomb, Illinois. Reach out to The Ben Show and let us help you find the right taxidermist. Welcome back to your outlet for outdoors and Western lifestyle, The Ben Show. I'm your host, Rebecca Warner, a.k.a. Beck. And alongside me, as always, is my co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart. I wanted to tackle this here topic, and that is getting prepared for the upcoming camping, family get-togethers, uh, quick nights, you don't have time to cook, all of those above. So I'm talking about foods and how to start making them and freezing them now so that the next coming months are a breeze for you. For example, recently, Tigger and I hosted a party and we decided to do something simple like a nacho taco bar. Well, I knew that we would be serving about 20 people at the event. So I was already going to have to brown up several, several pounds of hamburger. Well, it dawned on me, why not just make enough for several other upcoming activities that we will be hosting? And hence, we browned probably closer to 20 pounds of hamburger, but seasoned it in a way that we knew could be multi-purpose use. I did use a bit of a uh, taco season with this, knowing that most of the times we're probably going to make it either into a chili, make it into tacos on the go. It's just a really easy one. It goes even great that hamburger once it's chopped and seasoned that way to throw into soups. And so I love this idea because now after our party is was done, we still have about four, I would say, containers worth of brown hamburger seasoned, ready to go for the next festivity that's coming up. For It'll, the next festivity? Well. So I have a question for you. Yes. Um, do you think that it's easier to cook for more people than it is fewer people? Absolutely. Why is that? Because sometimes it's a mind over matter. When you're just cooking for yourself and maybe your other half, like you, Tigger, it's kind of hard to get into that groove of like, I'm going to make something gourmet and take the extra time. But if you know that you're doing it for a bigger group, for say, that's one of my love languages. So then I feel like it's even a more important reason to cook even more, make it more special. And if especially I know that I've nailed down the flavor of whatever I'm making, I just continue making more of it so that I can freeze it. And now I know I've got a game winning type meal to serve whenever people come over. So what you're saying is we're just maximizing leftovers. <laughs> Okay, you didn't have to put it that way, and I definitely would not tell your guests that you're going to serve that, that that's what you're doing. 
We're going to call this show wrapped, folks. Thank you again to my producer, sound engineer, co-host, Jeff Tigger Earhart, and also to Johnny Candle, the professional angler and sports fishing commentator. We always appreciate hearing from Johnny, and we'll have all of his contact information on thebenshow.com. Remember, folks, to keep sending in your questions. You might have something spot-worthy for us to share, a recipe we need to test out in our very own cabin kitchen, as well as your area's field reports. That number, again, you can call or text anytime 305-900-2363 again 305-900-2363 or you can always email the bend radio show at gmail.com missed part of this episode want to hear past shows you can find them all on the website thebendshow.com be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and to the bend show youtube channel if you're looking to change things up this year at your next event conference awards banquet rodeo have tigger and beck entertain your crowd we are prca pro rodeo card holders tigger is a pro rodeo announcer. I am a music director myself. Let us come and make your event extra special. Thank you to our partners, the world famous Miles City Buck and Horse Sale, Ditelli Outdoors, The Prairie Crocus, Medora Boot and Western Wear, Blue Water Girl Charters, Buckstorm, Little Rack Taxidermy, Mickey's Mustard, ToxicCalls.com, RFD TV, and Wrangler. Finally, a big thanks to all of you listeners who came out along with us. And whether you are coming or going today, stay with us as we ranch it up. Remember to keep up with me, Beck, all week long by following The Bend on Facebook and on Instagram at The Bend Show. This is Rebecca Warner. Catch Beck if you can next week on The Bend. Mm-hmm.